Good morning folks, welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. It is the first Champions League match day morning. We're here at Celtic Park ahead of Celtic versus Real Madrid tonight. I've got Stuart with me. We're going to build up the excitement for tonight's game. Stuart, first of all, just being here this early in the morning, you can still get the feel that there's something happening over there tonight, don't you? Aye, no, it's a special place. If you look at um, if you look at the things that are constructed outside it as well, like I know from my time covering games here, Champions League mix zone, just the sheer amount of TV trucks, it's an international event, mm. unlike uh, your average sort of Livingston at home. No knocking that, because the football's great. That's Whatever game Celtic are playing. <laughs> aye, exactly. Um, aye, no, it's exciting, mate. It's one of those that... You can, there's almost a feeling in the air. I don't know if that's overstating it. No, there is. I said that yesterday when I was here for the press conference. You can just you can just tell something big's happening. As you say, it's just got a different feel to a normal game. How was the press? It was brilliant. It was really good. Um, that's the first time. It's the first one I've done in person, actually. Right. Because everyone I've done has, has been on Zoom. Uh, I've sent some of the other guys because uh, I've been unable to make most of them person ones. But to be there at a Champions League Squad rotation League one, merchant, this guy. <laughs> a Champions League one. All the Champions League branding up and all that. It's just brilliant, man. It was like pinch yourself moment because I was like, I'm just sitting here uh, talking to Ange, talking to Matt O'Reilly. Uh, how was the Champions gaffer? League was he in good form? Aye, aye. Just uh, like consistent messaging. It's like a lot of questions about his approach, which are baffling because as if MD's in doubt about what the approach will be tonight. Was that for the foreign journalists or the Scottish journalists? No, that, was, that well? was from the Scottish journalists. Really? Aye, That's surprising. Aye. Um, I think it's kind of expected though, isn't it? Because they almost want them to say, well, I maybe we will change it a wee bit or maybe we will draw it back a bit. Maybe we'll be less attacking, maybe we'll, we'll change what we do. But he's never going to say that. And I think they should know that by now. But he gives, he gives some great answers. Um, he had a great quote about, um, we've got a Champions League fan base and it's up to us to be a Champions League team. Um, I love that. And we'll see that tonight, obviously. Real Madrid, I, I've been, leading up to this, I've been thinking, about Celtic, the form we're in, the players that are in form, how can we hurt Real Madrid? And not really thinking about Real Madrid. And then I watched some clips of their training last night and I was like, aye, they're quite good. Yeah, <laughs> champions of Europe, eh? <laughs> just, just a list of players. I mean, Benzema, Vinicius, Modric, Rudiger, Alaba, uh, Militao, you, you like, list goes on and on and on. And it's, it's, such a, strong. it's such a strong team and obviously we, we did the, the preview video with another, another Paul, Mac, Paul McDonald the other day um, and just going through, it's, it's interesting actually to, to note that they are they are kind of, they are in a period of transition and there seems to be like a consistent squad rotation going on. Mm. Well, I've seen some suggestions for fans at Real Madrid that Luka Modric might not start, I don't believe them because if there's one player that I think is absolutely integral for them, then it's probably him. And then Karim Benzema, mm. best like aging like a fine wine, finest striker in, in, in the world at the moment, in my opinion. They are they are doing a bit of succession planning in midfield, though, aren't they? As yeah. you talked about the other day. Aye. Um, here's a question: Do you think this is a free hit for Celtic tonight? No. I think there's an expectation now, and I think it's testament to how far we've come as a football club and as a team and what Ange Postecoglou in the space of a year, mate, a year and a wee bit, that's it, um, has built is is absolutely incredible. I think most Celtic fans are coming into this tonight and have the expectation of definitely a performance, not a scudding, um, which I don't think was true, even under Brendan Rodgers, where there was domination domestically, like we, we, we got humbled at our, our home, and, and that can't happen, but I, I, that won't happen tonight. Uh, and I think... I mean, I can see Celtic losing the game, but I can also see Celtic winning the game. And that's, <laughs> I mean, it's Real Madrid, but strange things can happen at Parkhead and, and, and nights like this. And aye, it's, it's definitely not a free hit, mate. I think, I think we can go into this with expectations of giving a good account of ourselves. And if things go our way, we can win this game. Aye, I think so. I mean, it's still an outside chance, right? And that's what I've been saying. Like, I've been lulling myself into because I'm constantly thinking about how well Celtic are playing, as if it's going to be easier. Um, and then when I look at Real Madrid, I'm like, oh, I forgot about him, forgot about him. <laughs> um, I talked to Ange at, on, on Trophy Day last season. I asked him about finishing the league season unbeaten at Celtic Park and how important it was to build 
something there and make that into a fortress again. And he said that is that's exactly what we're trying to do. Like he says we'll get the fastest ball boys in the world and everything we do is to try and make the opposition uncomfortable. And that's what we'll have to do tonight. I think what needs to happen, see if we're to win the game as you're saying, if we're to bring him a chance of winning the game. We need Real Madrid to come here thinking, do you know what, we can play at 70 or 80% of the night and we'll stroll it well win. Mm. And us to get under their skin, for the atmosphere to get at them, for us to start the game Proud. well, build on it, score at the right time if we get the chance, which is something I asked about yesterday, being ruthless, mm -hmm. which the team have done brilliantly so far this season, particularly in the last few weeks, really ruthless with opens in the final third. And you need a bit of luck on nights like this as well against teams like this. Oh, it's all about the rub of the green. I mean, we had, it was as if we got, uh, I don't know, a decade's worth of that when we played Barcelona here um, and beat them 2-1. And I think I think we've been suffering since. So we might be due a wee bit of luck in the in the European stage, to be fair. Um, and definitely, like, when, you, when we did that video, uh, looking back at Celtic historically in the Champions League, I think we've been very, very unlucky. Uh, with a lot of decisions going against this, particularly the Martin O'Neill team and stuff. Mm. So, yeah, I think we need a bit of luck, but I think it's about, and I said this in that video as well, it's about making sure we're ruthless, as you say, but getting goals at the right times, I think, is important. See if we can get a goal in the first 20, 25 minutes, anything can happen tonight. If we lose the first goal, then it becomes an uphill battle. Mm. Um, it is one of the biggest cliches in the, in the, in the football analysis book, but... First goal's vital the night, Paul. If we can get the first goal, we can win this game. And it's Real Madrid, man. And we're saying that. That just shows how far we've come. Aye. I think the first goal's massive, as it always is in these games. Any any team selection headaches for you? Obviously, a bad Maeda was the, the debate at the weekend. A bad one. Started, scored, scored another two goals. Jenk, he's a stick on. Aye. Tonight. I think you've got to... I think Ange Postecoglou, if he was a different type of manager, might consider that a conundrum. But I think Ange Postecoglou, looking at the way Jota has played all season in Abada since he's come into the team, I don't think you change that. I think if Dyson Maeda plays, and people might think that's a canod thing to say, maybe it's up front. Maybe it's so that the intensity of the press, if Kyogo mm -hmm. doesn't he start the game, obviously. And by the way, do we know the, the exact situation? He could start the, the game. He Aye. could start the game. Anne's just said oh, he's fine, he's training, I've not made my decision yet. Yesterday in the start of the prediction, I went with Yakimakis because I just thought if Kyogo comes off three days ago, it's maybe unlikely that he starts. But see if he's fine. Mm -hmm. I think he should start because I think he's so integral to how this Celtic team plays in transition and that would be big for us tonight it was big for us in the Europa League last season mm -hmm. it'll be big in all of these Champions League games I think the more pace we can have going forward the more we can hurt these teams because we're going to have less of the ball that's a fact yeah that's that's a definite fact I, I think another argue, what, argument you could make for Maeda coming in is obviously he's work off the ball he's worked defensively um, folk are buzzing already but they'll get a wee bee <laughs> beside you um, <laughs> I think one of the arguments you could make is obviously he's worked off the ball and defensively, so if you look at the quality of Danny Carvajal as a, a right back, really good going forward, um, that would be an argument to throw him in. Uh, or, as well as that, you could say on the other side that you have Vinicius Jr. will be coming in off the left, so if you could have another person to double up in terms of on him, what you could see is you could see Maeda on the right and Jota on the left, that's, that, that's a kind of potential. I think it's not unfeasible that Maeda could start up front tonight, but that would only be if Ange thought Kyogo's not ready and the intensity of the press has to be right. It would be it would be kind of harsh on Yakimakis to do that, yeah. given how he's done for us since mm -hmm. he's come in. But I like the key thing is right. We could go any way about this start the eleven. Whether your predictions proves correct or not, my man. And I think we've got a chance tonight, regardless of who plays, because that is the depth of the squad now. Big night defensively, big night for everybody, oh, but big huge, night defensively. Um, you talk about Vinicius there, likely to be up against uh, Josip Juranovic. Need a big performance for him, but we know he's capable Aye. Of, of performances in these big games. Um, Greg Taylor as well has been performing brilliantly. And Cameron Carter-Vickers, who week to week looks like he doesn't even break sweat. <laughs> it'll be he will the night. He will, he will the night. It'll be so interesting to see him up against that Real Madrid front three and carrying Benzema as well. Absolutely. Benzema, um, I mean, in, in central defence, do you think that's a discussion as to who plays? Or do you Starfield's think injured. Ah, Starfield's out. definitely out. Yeah. Right, well, in that Jens. case, Morris Jens is going to be... Cause he's, uh, Great um, opportunity for him. Aye, oh, I mean, the, th the thing about Morris Jens is 
Um, he was he was culpable uh, for one of the goals against Ross County in the midweek game, but um, I think generally since he's come in, he's doing some things defensively with Celtic that I've not seen him do since Virgil Van Dijk, mm. the way he carries the ball out. And the other key thing is, and I suppose it's Karim Benzema, who's not necessarily someone that relies on outright pace now, but it's his pace and moments and his movement. It's so the, the way to compensate for if you maybe lose him for like a quarter or a half second, which is all it takes at Champions League level, is if you've got that extra pace to get in and close him. And Cameron Carter Vickers and Morris Jens both have that. Mm. And that's going to be an important factor for Celtic tonight. I think without getting to the all oh, panic and let's clear our lines stage, I think it's very, very important that we don't overplay at the back in the early stages. Mm. Let's not overdo that. Joe Hart, love him to bits. Um, but that you can remember that game in pre-season where like, he was nearly up at the centre circle. <laughs> Name the Manuel Neuer stuff the night. <laughs> Stick to being a keeper. But um, I defensively, this is Greg Taylor's the one for me, right? Because Rodrigo started the season in form for Real Madrid. Um, they 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 really feel that he's he's really coming coming into his own now, as 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 a key member of their team. This is the biggest game of most of the Celtic player tonight's careers but Greg Taylor in particular, this is going to be a barometer of how much he's come on. Yeah. Like, because he really has progressed, but that's domestically. Champions of Europe visit tonight. Mm -hmm. And if Greg Taylor can put in a good performance, and let's face it, Adam Matthews did it with Lionel Messi. He did. So, aye, if, if, if Greg Taylor can do that tonight, that will be brilliant. And I, I just, I think the other thing is, so that's defensively, Celtic also have the weapons to hurt this Real Madrid team. Another fascinating factor for me the night is, Real Madrid are a counter-attacking team. Mm. That's, That's what I was going to say there. You're talking about, sorry to interrupt you, you're talking about playing out for the back. How are they going to, are they going to come and press us high up the pitch and, and try and stop us from playing? I don't are they going to let I, us have it to a certain point and then engage? I think there'll be spells of both because that's the nature of these games. I think there'll be spells where Real Madrid maybe try to get us and press us, particularly in the early stages. I think they'll try to disrupt mm. any composure that we try to assert playing out for the back. But, I think there will also be stages where they go right Celtic are in the ascendancy, we maybe have a bit of possession and although keeping possession is going to be the key aspect tonight, that's almost when we're our most vulnerable, yeah. once players are upfield. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, if you've got Morris Jens, because the one thing is, if Starfelt was out, I, did, I didn't see the injury news, but like, if Starfelt's definitely out, he was the only player I would look at and say, he could get overrun. Mm. Like he, he could be one that, that maybe doesn't have the pace to, to kind of do it if, if Real Madrid do go in the break, whereas... The rest of the team, even if we do get caught in the break, we've got the pace to get back. It's just making sure that we time challenges and get angles right and all of that kind of stuff. But another massive factor in that is Joe Hart. Mm. Joe Hart's a leader and we're going to need him to be a leader tonight. Mm. Callum McGregor's a leader. We're going to need him to be a leader tonight. Um, we're going to need we're going to need all figures to step up to the top of their game. Right, absolutely. Whether that's showing flair in Jota's case, whether that's Kyogo Furuhashi playing with a smile and scoring goals, uh, whether that's Cameron Carter Vickers shutting out probably the best striker in world football everybody's going to need to be right on it but the leaders will set the tone Absolutely last thing before we finish up this morning it's been five years since we made the Champions League group stages and when you go to the stadium so often it takes a lot for the atmosphere to really surprise you but I hope it blows me away the atmosphere tonight this game 42 years in, in the waiting <laughs> to face Real Madrid so the atmosphere should be pretty special should be this is my moment to go unfortunately I'm not a season ticket holder I go and I get tickets every week when I can if there's anybody out there with a spare at Hodgie the Hack on Twitter hit me up and I'll be here like a shot you'll go um, to race mate I... <laughs> <laughs> you'll go to race no I think so um, like gold dust and it's understandable I mean I've, I've actually sort of been speaking to, to some people that know people inside the club they say they've never, ever, ever seen, and Martin for the channel as well, um, who's, who's very well connected ticket-wise, like, never, ever seen demand like it. Mm. It's, and I think that's testament to the fact that this is the one we've been waiting for. It's testament to where Celtic are at as a football club, because it's really hard to get tickets for home games now. Right. And like, if you think... Sold out, sold out on Saturday again. Exactly, like, and that's just evidence of what's been built here. Mm. And I, like, I think, I mean... The atmosphere's special at Celtic Park every European game. I mean, it's special at Celtic Park every every game, but every European game is special. This will be the first Disco Lights Champions League game uh -huh. as well, which uh -huh. is uh, a factor. And 
I, I mean, I'm getting chills in my spine even thinking about that moment where the spotlight's going to come down in the huddle, you know, um, the walk on, everything is going to be, but by the way, to any supporter that's going to be lucky enough to be there tonight, do your bit. We need every man, woman and child in that stadium to get behind that team. And we've seen in the past with that 12th man, which is in my opinion, the best 12th man in football, if we can support Celtic to the level that they need tonight, and if the team can give us something to really, really get behind, we've got, a we, wow, we've got more than a chance, mate. Like we can, we can upset the champions of Europe tonight and put down a statement and and have a result which makes the, the rest of Europe go, oh, Celtic are back. Yeah, absolutely, that's what football is all about. Dreaming that Celtic can compete at this level, and we'll see that tonight against the European champions. Thanks for joining us in this video. Like it, comment your own thoughts below. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll be back after full time. Well, all the full time reaction as normal and we've got a Twitter space on at half twelve so if you're on Twitter follow us at Celtic Fans TV and join in and ask your questions on there as well. Cheers.